Hello and welcome to a uh, fairly brief exercise on uh, activities and cost drivers. And uh, this is something that we will get into a little bit more specifically later in the uh, course when we deal with something called activity-based costing. Uh, but for now, we want to understand that you know, when we think about, when we go back to our, our basic accounting classes and we think about the concept of, of costs, you know, we have, uh, we, we actually have something called, uh, unexpired costs, which are actually assets. And then we have expired costs, which are assets that have been used up. So, um, lots of different types of costs and, uh, Ultimately, you know, cost and an expense are not the same thing. An expense is, is an expired cost. Um, but as we go throughout our, our daily operations with any business, we encounter uh, any number of business activities that drive costs up. And some of these are fairly significant and some of them are not. And, and, an activity that is a major cost driver uh, for one company may not be a major cost driver. The same activity may not be a major cost driver for another company. So what this little brief activity uh, or exercise uh, is uh, doing here is they have listed some activities <clears throat> and they're saying, okay, we're going to pay vendors. We're going to uh, consider packaging and, and supervision in a factory setting or wherever, quite honestly. And then we're going to match that up to a cost driver. Um, so as the activity increases, uh, what are we doing that makes cost go up? Because ultimately, uh, cost will have to be expensed, some immediately, uh, some after time. Okay. So, paying vendors. Uh, one other thing really quickly, um, you know, a lot of these we're, what we're going to get into here very, very soon is the concept that a lot of these activities and costs are part of something called overhead and that has to be allocated. And so that's, that's another reason why we do this. But for right now, uh, we're, we're focusing on the relationship between a business activity and the cost that is driven up as a result of that activity um, uh, or what causes that activity to uh, incur costs. So the first one is uh, paying vendors. Okay. And so we look over here to our choices and I'm going to kind of go through this fairly uh, quickly. Um, and I've looked at this in advance, so I know the answer. Is it going to be this one right here? Number of checks issued. So I want you to understand that when we pay vendors, we, we, we're buying something. We're either buying a good, like perhaps inventory, a supply, or maybe they're providing some kind of a service for us. But most companies have an accounts payable department that is responsible uh, for making sure that vendor invoices are legitimate and so forth. And then at some point a check is going to have to be issued. Now, uh, in modern times, these payments are often made electronically. So whether we're talking about uh, specifically checks being issued or just the, the overall process of paying a vendor, there actually is a cost. There are, there are employees who are responsible for doing that. So we're not only talking about paper checks, just the activity or the driver of, of paying, the, the activity of paying vendors will drive up uh, cost for our company. Okay. Number two, uh, receive material uh, deliveries. Perhaps we ordered from some vendors some materials and now they are uh, delivering them to us. Well, when that happens, those deliveries have to be processed and so if we look over here to our choice, let's see here, probably this one right here, number of deliveries, H, is probably the most reasonable uh, cost driver. 
it would stand to reason that the higher number of deliveries that we receive, um, the more that activity is going to cost us. And you say, well, wait a minute, what if I just make a, a, a fewer orders, but really, really large, wouldn't that, wouldn't that kind of cancel out? Um, in some ways, or partially, yes, uh, but not completely. So generally speaking, the higher number of deliveries uh, we have, the higher uh, that activity uh, of receiving materials or, or inventory, uh, either way, uh, the higher that's going to be. And so let's look at number three, inspect uh, raw materials. And let's see what we've got as an answer for number three, inspect raw materials. Okay, probably this one here, let me just make sure. We got F for number three. All right, uh, number of raw materials received. Another one here, um, you know, we could also have one for uh, inspecting, you know, if we're, if we're inspecting raw materials, right, um, this is something that we're just ordering and we're going to use raw materials to make some other type of product. So we usually are going to order our raw materials. We may also have some inspection uh, inspections related to a product that we uh, put together. In other words, we might order uh, pieces of wood to make a rocking chair. That's our raw material. And then when we actually make the rocking chair, we might have a, a separate inspection. But this is uh, uh, inspect raw material, so it would be the number of, uh, and it's, in other words, it says, notice it says number of units uh, received rather than the number of orders of raw materials received because even if we inspect one out of every 10 uh, that we that we get in, uh, we're going to, the more units we order, the higher that cost is going to be, okay? Uh, for and for the uh, purchases of raw materials, this one uh, is probably going to be the very first one, number of different raw material uh, items. And so what they're talking about here is, you know, products have differing levels of complexity. So in the rocking chair example, um, you know, we, if, it's, if it's an all wood rocking chair, uh, really the only main uh, raw material we're going to have is wood. And we might have some glue or some nails or something like that. But if you think about like an, a piece of electronics, we could have any number of raw materials. And so planning for those purchases uh, because we want to make so many finished units that require up to different uh, raw materials, that uh, planning process is going to be higher whenever we're dealing with uh, a higher number of different raw materials uh, for the finished good that we're going to be making. Number five is uh, packaging. And if we look down through our list, uh, number of, let's see, I thought I saw it here. And there it is, number of customer orders. So the last one, we went from the first to the last, which is J. And again, packaging, you know, we, we've got, we've made our item or we bought it from somewhere, we've gotten the order, and now we still have to complete the sale. And so we've got the money, uh, but packaging that item, uh, we can't ship it. Uh, or deliver it until we uh, package it. So, um, again, one customer might order uh, a lot. And so there's not going to be a, it's not like, you know, an each item, uh, let's see, I'm pointing to the wrong thing. Uh, but, but let's say that our average uh, customer order is for uh, three units or 50 units, whatever. Um, the more customer orders we have, the higher cost is going to be associated with the activity of packaging. Okay, and then supervision. This one should be fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, number of employees. Generally speaking, um, generally speaking, we, uh, we have a situation where a supervisor can only supervise so many employees. 
And we're going to come back to this uh, concept later in the course when we deal with um, expanding operations and because supervision is generally considered uh, kind of a flat fixed cost but if we keep hiring too many employees then we might have to hire more supervisors and that uh, cost can actually change. Uh, okay so employee training is the uh, next one this one here and I believe that the answer to this is B I think I was a little worried about that one but I came up with that because they say the number of classes offered and sometimes employee training does not involve a, a, a formal class uh, but a lot of you have had jobs and so forth and so uh, the, the more items that we decide that we want to train an employee on whether it's in a formal classroom or not the higher the cost of that activity uh, and then let's see here number eight is operating uh, machines and a uh, number of machine hours this is one that you really really want to uh, remember um, because that is um, that is a uh, that's a one of the main cost drivers is uh, machine hours particularly in a factory uh, setting so when we operate those machines time is being incurred uh, on those uh, machines and that has all different types of costs associated with it, uh, usually some type of utility, but also wear and tear on the machine itself. Okay, number nine is uh, machine uh, maintenance. And then they have for the uh, driver uh, E, I believe, that's what I came up with because I didn't have anything else. Uh, but I would argue that, um, you know, C could probably go there as well. Uh, machine maintenance is going to be based on um, uh, machine hours and uh, hopefully if we've got a good plan our maintenance is based on machine hours so uh, eight and nine uh, somewhat uh, you know we could probably say for number nine E or C but I believe uh, is the correct answer because it says it may only be used once up here and then number 10 opening accounts uh, at a bank and I believe we only have one left and that would be the number of new customers so what we're talking about here just real briefly is uh, if you go into a bank and you open an account um, someone has to help you open that account so the number of uh, new customers at the bank is going to drive up costs for the activity uh, of opening accounts If we have just a small number of new accounts this activity is going to be fairly low cost. Most banks would prefer to have a lot of new accounts, <clears throat> so they don't mind. They don't mind this particular uh, activity costing them uh, so long as they can open those accounts as efficiently as possible. All right, well, that's it for this video. Uh, just again, wanted you to kind of get uh, an idea between the, rela the relationship between an activity and a cost driver. Uh, you should always uh, read more on this in your textbook or other resources as well. Okay, that's it for this video.